Buenos Tardes. And today I am in San Salvador at the Parque Cuscatlan. And uh, this is a typical day for the season it's in. It is the rainy season. And I tell you, it, just about every night it's raining and it is probably the most depressing <laughs> place I have been in forever. Every night it rains and basically, you know, when you're, when you're alone and it's raining, you know, there's only so much TV you can watch, there's only so much, you know, research you can do for videos or whatever. And it just gets a little overwhelming, I guess you could say. And, you know, I've been reading this book. Uh, one of my sons and his girlfriend gave it to me before I came down here. And it's got inspirational quotes. And I try to read them and I try to stay positive and focused on positive things. And, you know, like today is despair gives way to faith. And uh, honestly, uh, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure about this whole thing. Uh, I picked El Salvador for a number of reasons. One reason that I did not think of, because I thought yeah, I can do this, it'd be no problem, would be the learning to speak Spanish. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, that has turned into more of a chore more of a, a challenge than I originally thought I got a great teacher it's it's all on me and everything uh, you know I am picking it up here and there uh, but it is still a bit much so one recommendation I'm going to give to any of you passport bros or any people looking for an adventure, pick the country that speaks your language <laughs> and go there. Uh, the, uh, the majority of people here in El Salvador speak Spanish. I mean, that's their language. Uh, it's, it's totally, you know, what I expected. And uh, yeah, I just, was not prepared mentally. It had been a long time since I've been in school and studied and had to really, you know, cram for exams and do stuff like that. And uh, it shows when I go to do reviews or whatever, or when I'm out in the public and trying to understand. I can sort of read it. I can make sense of some of the, uh, some of the words or most of the words and uh, go from there but just to talk to someone it is a challenge it is a challenge and uh, you know like I told my kids it's going to be like in the old western movies when I was a kid we had the Indians and the cowboys right and the Indians would speak broken English to the cowboys and I said that's going to be me speaking Spanish to the El Salvadorian people and unfortunately, that is about the case. <laughs> so, I mean, there are more and more people. There's English classes all over the country because uh, they do call centers, they do different things. And uh, my teacher actually does teach uh, English to uh, a majority of students. And, uh, you know, he does teach uh, Spanish to a few of us and a few of us uh, expats that are down here visiting. And, uh, you know, the language barrier, it comes into play in many different things. And one of the things is the relationship uh, issue. You know, honestly, I figured I'm in over two years now that I would be settled down, uh, have a girlfriend, you know, somebody to live with and share my adventures with. Well, that's not that's not happening. I mean, it's uh, it's closer now than it has been. Uh, is El Salvador best for me? 
you know, I've made some great friends. I really have, and I enjoy the country overall. Um, I mean, I've learned a lot being down here. This is an extremely poor country. If, you're, if you've never been to El Salvador or you're just curious about it, the average wage per month is like four or $500, I think, is what they bring home. And, you know, that is terrible. That is terrible. And then you get all us damn gringos coming down here looking to buy a little house or something. And they throw these prices out there. There's no, no real estate, oh, let's see, authority down here that I can find that levels the playing field so that like back home we had the multi list and you could find out how much a house in that same neighborhood sold for the most recent one or five years ago or whatever to sort of see the trend that's not happening here here they take this price oh let's make this price for this house and let's make it this and they throw it on the wall see if it sticks See if somebody buys it. Well, of course, the El Salvadorian people know it's not worth that at all. But you get us stupid gringos coming down here that lived in, well, like I say, some of you guys lived in New York or California or Texas where the land prices were just outrageous, you know, due to whatever. And uh, you say, oh, well, that's not bad for oceanfront property or for a house that size yeah well that just drives the price up for these hard-working El Salvadorian people that uh, that want a, a good house they, I mean they're working hard trying to hustle as my friend says and uh, do their jobs pick up side jobs whatever they got to do to make money it makes it very hard for them to get a decent home for their family. So, uh, one recommendation I would definitely have, <laughs> you, I hate to say you need more regulation, but you need something in the real estate market to govern these price gouging that some of these real estate people can do and do to people. It's just incredibly terrible, I think that they would do this to people. But they do it because, you know, the money is there for some some people. And uh, I don't know, it's just it's very, uh, very aggravating uh, to see that because, you know, I'd love to have a, a nice house down here somewhere, a little house, but with the prices the way they are, I mean, it's crap, it's like, you'd be buying something in California. And that's not going to happen for me. <laughs> no way, Jose. For sure. But anyway, other than that, the real estate deal is a complete terrible thing, I think. And you can ask just about anybody, except the real estate people. They probably love it. They say it's great. It's doing fantastic, all that. You know, well, we know how the real estate people are. You know, you got good ones and you got some that aren't so good. And unfortunately, we got the not so good ones really trying to over inflate prices down here on these houses or land. Now, as far as me and El Salvador, uh, I've worked on my residency. Uh, actually, I should get the actual card this month. And then sometime this year, we're gonna put in for the permanent residency where it's like a five year thing. And it sort of frees up my every year where I have to bother my son to get him to take paperwork for me to the state to get it apostled and stuff. And I can do that and then be good for five years. And then I can like travel more freely around the world or something like that. And honestly, right now, I'm looking at other places other than El Salvador to visit and possibly live. Uh, places where the, uh, the economy is more 
uh, reasonable. The uh, the you know relationships with the with women and stuff are a little bit more uh, encouraged and not so oh standoffish maybe is the, the word I'm looking for difficult for sure uh, and uh, I always say miracles can happen yeah miracles can happen uh, it'd be uh, it'd be a miracle for sure uh, if I got to stay here and, and found found the perfect girl you know like the one I found that that you know we were on the same page that would be awesome uh, let's see yeah, I, I do, guys. I do have to say, rainy season here in El Salvador is definitely a downer uh, for anybody visiting. Do not come during this time <laughs> unless you want to get rained on every night. We just went through a tropical storm, and then now we've got this rain just about every night. It rained on the, is, is pretty down at the beach when I left. And I thought, well, I'll go to the, the park up here. Be a great place to do this video. And it rained on me all the way up here once I got going. So, yeah. No bueno. <laughs> anyway, El Salvador is a great place to visit. Uh, come down to look at, to check out to go on adventures with your family, to see all the different sites. Uh, if you're a Bitcoin person, they've got a Bitcoin farmer's market tomorrow. I'll probably be going to making a, a video on it. Uh, there's some great people in that, and they're trying to do good things with Bitcoin. And uh, I'm not a pro or negative Bitcoin person, but I think it's, a, uh, it's an opportunity and it, it you know could reap some good results for uh, el salvador and for these people that are really involved in it and i hope it does uh, we want to wish everybody the best in that and uh, in their venture other than that unfortunately i'm sorry it's not more a positive uh, little post update kind of thing but it is what it is here in El Salvador and in my life right now. Uh, trying to work on some videos. I did a, a music video last night with a, a blues band and uh, I think that's gonna turn out really cool and it should be fun. And then uh, tomorrow we'll have the Bitcoin farmer's market video. I'll be working on that. And then who knows what else. And uh, yeah, it's sort of like a little personal drama, I guess some of my videos but i mean when you tune in that's what you're gonna get you're gonna get me and you're gonna get me telling it like it is and like it's happening to me or whatever and uh you know i'm just normal like anybody else out there i got my good days and my bad days so <laughs> anyway i don't know how much of this will make the uh make the video I might have to edit out some of it, but we'll see. Anyway, I guess until next time, it is hasta luego, and I'll see you later. Bye.